verse in different song for us this morning. And I got one more thing I have to do this morning before I get started on my message. I was on Facebook this morning, and there was somebody in the congregation here had a birthday. And uh, I asked her husband if I could say something. He says, absolutely. So, Gina, happy birthday today.
pretty minute, isn't he? I mean, he's not asking you to go get up on a cross and die. But we can say, you know, my sins aren't as bad as the other person's sins. They sin a lot worse than I do. So, you know, me not forgiving them for their sins, you know, it's easier for God to forgive me because mine are little sins. The other person's sins are big sins. Sometimes we think that way. What is sin, really? It's anything that separates us from God. It doesn't matter how big or how small it is. But it's something that separates us from God. It doesn't matter if it's a big sin or a little sin. You can be forgiven for big sin. You can be forgiven for little sin. You need to. <coughs> and if you're reading the Lord's Prayer as I have forgiven others, Here's how we get caught up. Tooth for a tooth, revenge upon revenge upon revenge upon revenge. We gotta get even when sin others sin against us. I always love this part in this one um, Sandra Bullock movie. And she's a beauty contestant, an FBI agent undercover is a beauty contestant. Maybe some of you have seen the movie. And uh, all of the contestants, when they get up there, always say, oh, I wish for world peace. Well, all of you wish for world peace. Well, what do you do about it? What do we have out here in the world right now? You pick up the paper. Palestinians and Israelis fighting for how many centuries? Turks and Armenians fighting for how, many, how long? It's over a century. Crusaders, I mean, the, the Muslims in the Europeans who were in the Crusades, they were still fighting that. That happened how long ago? We have revenge after revenge after revenge. And that's the way we think too often. How are we ever going to have world peace? When we're all revenge after revenge. How are we ever going to have world peace when you can't have peace in our own homes. Look at the domestic violence every day you hear. We can't have peace in our homes. How are we ever going to have world peace if we can't have peace in our homes? How are we ever going to have world peace if we can't have peace in our neighborhoods? How are we ever going to have peace when you turn on the news or read the paper every more day and infighting and in our nation? Hatred on both sides. I don't care what side you're on, it's hatred. It's revenge. It's get even on both sides. How are we ever going to have peace when we can't have peace in our churches? How do we have peace when Jesus Christ's church, his people, Revenge after revenge after revenge. 
stop this? When are we going to start choosing God and forgive and forget? How many garbage you suppose in our house? And there's always a little wrench that comes with it. And if you look on the garbage disposals, there's a little red button called a reset button. And every once in a while, that garbage disposal gets so much garbage in there, it clogs up. Now, a little wrench is so you can turn it and get it started again. And then you press that reset button, and you get all that garbage out of there. And it starts all over fresh. That's what we need in our hearts. Because we have a lot of hatred in our hearts. We need to get that little wrench and crank it a little bit. Get it moving. Press that reset button. And get the hatred out of our hearts. We need to love. Like Christ loved us so much that he got up on a cross and died for us. We need to do that for each other. How do you start? It's not going to start with all these people here. It's going to start with you individually. You have to decide individually that I accept Christ as my Lord and Savior. I am no longer going to hate. I'm no longer going to seek a tooth for a tooth. I'm not going to seek revenge against somebody that sins against me. I'm going to return hatred with love. What needs to start with you. And that's the only way it will ever change. And you, you know, here's a saying, this comes from um, somebody who wasn't a Christian, it was Mahatma Gandhi, but he said that you need to be a change that you want in the world. How do you expect the world to ever have peace if you don't have peace in your heart and love in your heart for others? How can you expect the world to change? How can you expect the church to change? How can you expect your neighborhood to change? How can you expect your nation to change when you have all that in you? You need to get that out. Press that reset button. The weak cannot forgive. It takes strong people to forgive. Strong Christians. Because you know what? We're strong because we have Christ. He's in your heart. He's there with you. He loves you. He wants to make it better for you. You have strength. So who cares if you say, if somebody says something to you and you don't like it? Why does it hurt you? You have Christ. He loves you. If you have Christ, how can anybody stand against you? Isn't that what the Bible says? If you have Christ, nobody can stand against you. Hey, here's one that I always like. This was Abraham Lincoln. And this is what we do often, you know, when we go to war, well, God's on our side. This is what Abraham Lincoln said. Rather than hope God is on our side, we need to be on God, God's side. Think about it. Rather than think that we hope, well, we, God's on our side in this battle. Well, no. You need to be on God's side. And what does God say? He says, love thy neighbor as thyself. He doesn't say, hate thy neighbor because they sinned against me. He says, in the, in the, in the you know, uh, he said in, in the uh, Lord's Prayer, forgive others. That's the Lord's side. That's the side we need to be on. There is no other side. Of the devils. Proverbs 19:11. The 
person's wisdom yields patience. It is one's glory to overlook the offense. You know, I am amazed how much wisdom is in this Bible. When I read it every time, I get something different. And I learn something new. But there is so much wisdom. Everything you need to know about life is here. Everything. You don't have to read another book again. Read your Bible. So much wisdom. And it says, why did we let, why did another offense have to bother us? That's what it just said there. Are we over, are we patient and overlook those offenses against us? Or do we get mad at everything that happens? Sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. How many of you were taught that? Of you were taught that by your mothers. You know, I hear so much about feelings being hurt and so on. Well, my feelings are hurt. Everybody's feelings are hurt. But you know what? Forgive each other. Forgive each other. Because when we're strong in Christ, like I said earlier, when we're strong in Christ, we have the strength. To Stronger and it'll pass. And tomorrow we won't be angry. Did you ever stop and think how many times we hurt God's feelings? We talk about hurting each other's feelings. How many times we hurt God's feelings? In the process of being. How many times can you forgive somebody? the answer.
I tell you not even seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servant. As he began to settle it, a man who owed him ten thousand bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and their children and all that he had, he sold them to repay his debt. At this, his servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell on his knees and begged him, Be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused and said he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called his servant in. You wicked servant, he said, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jealous to be tortured until he uh, would pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Those aren't my words. Those are the words of Christ. You may have a Bible that has red letters in it. Okay, what are those red letters? Those are the words of Christ. That's red letter stuff. Christ said I didn't make that up. It's in the Bible. Go to Psalm 103, 12. As far as the east is from the west. I'll give you a second to get there. I'm sorry. If you ever want to know how to get to Psalms real quick, take your Bible and split it down. Psalms is in the middle. <laughs> Okay, Psalm 103, 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far is removed our transgressions from us. How far is that from the east from the west? If you keep going west, you're always going west, right? That's how far he's forgiven us for ours. We need to forgive our neighbors, our members of the church with us, our nation, citizens, that's how we need to forgive others. And never forget it, or never remember it. Never remember it. Like, a, like the, we'd be pure as the driven snow. <coughs> With God's forgiveness, we need to be saved. Bless you.
I'm going to be a Christian tomorrow, and I get up every morning, and I'm going to be a Christian, I'm going to forgive people, I'm not going to take offense all the time, I'm not going to jump to conclusions, I'm not going to retaliate against anybody, I'm going to be a Christian today. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. <clears throat> Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. There's only one way to change the world. That's when you decide you're changing, and then you become the change out there in that world that you want. Don't just wish like those beauty pad contestants for world peace. Go out and be what you can be for peace. What can you do as an individual for the peace in every part of your life that you want? Go ahead, Luke 6, 37 and 38. Two years ago, I gave a message about life is not about me. And of that 116 things that I wrote down, that's the very first one I wrote down. Life isn't about me. Why am I here? Why are you here? And we've been asking that since we were in college, you know, why am I here? You know, and, uh, well, why are we? We're going to love God and love our neighbor. And to go out and spread the word of God. Do we spread the word of God outside this church? Or do we talk about the problem within our church? Do we spread the word of God when we're talking about politics? Or do we talk about hating people? What does God want us to do? Be a peacemaker. 
Mother Teresa. What a lady. I gave her whole life. You talk like life's not about me. She gave her whole life to help other people. She said, if we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. Do we remember that? We're a family in this place. We're a family in this nation. We need to remember that. We belong to each other. We're here to help each other. We're one body. How many times have we read that? We're one body. Different parts, but we're one body. We're the body of Christ. He's charged us to go out and help other people. I want to close here with the uh, Three readings. And, uh, first one is Colossians 3, 12 to 13. Please 
help us. Please love us. Lord, help us show compassion for others out there. Because you know what? This is a rough world out there today. And so many people don't have anybody they can turn to. We need to be the ones that they can to give them compassion. So many people are looking for kindness in this world. There's so much hatred out there. We're surprised when we see in the paper or hear on the news an act of kindness. It shouldn't be that way. Humility. Lord, we need to be humble with each other and serve each other and understand that we're all your sheep. Be gentle. Be gentle with each other. That's what we need, Lord. Help us to be that way. Please give us patience. And please have patience.